Hello everyone. Welcome to this video, Load Balancing Azure VMware Solution Workloads with Azure Application Gateway. My name is Satya Sresta. I am a Senior Staff Multi-Cloud Solutions Architect here at VMware. In this video, I'll walk you through the process of integrating Azure Application Gateway to load balance workloads running on Azure VMware Solution. Azure Application Gateway is an Azure service that processes traffic to web apps that are serviced by a pool of web servers. Azure Application Gateway is a layer 7 load balancer and operates in application layer of OSI model. It manages the requests that client applications send to web apps that are hosted on a pool of web servers. In our case, the pool of web servers are running in Azure VMware solution private cloud. Application Gateway uses a round robin process to load balance requests to these web app servers in the backend pool. The web app servers in the backend pool are part of 10.121.11.1/24 NSXT segment, each having IP addresses from the same IP range, which is 10.121.11.101, 102, and 103 for hybrid app 101, hybrid app 102, and hybrid app 103, respectively. Okay, let's take a look at these web app servers in Azure VMware Solution and start configuring the Azure application gateway. I'm already loaded onto Microsoft Azure portal. Now let's have a quick look on Azure VMware Solution backend pool servers. For that, I'm just going to look for Azure VMware Solution. And you will see the, the next screen where you will see the Azure private cloud that we have. In my case, it is MCA AVS demo STDC. So if I click on this one, it will show me the details of my AVS private cloud. In my private cloud, uh, if I look at the clusters, it will show me the cluster, and it says that I have three ESXi hosts. As you can see here, uh, these are the three ESXi hosts. Now, to log on to uh, the VMware vCenter server or VMware vCenter web UI, uh, I can go to VMware Credentials and open up this web client URL, which is 10.21.0.2 in my case. Now, I've already opened this web client URL for vCenter server, which is here in the next tab. And if I go on top here, you can see the vCenter FQDN. And also you'll see there is a cluster. And in that cluster, I have three ESXi servers. Now, in my case, for the load balancing, uh, I have a resource pool called Satya RP AVS. And as we saw in earlier diagram, the backend pool servers are here. Hybrid app 101. And you can see the IP address from the range 10.121.11.101 and so on for 102. You can see the IP address here, and 103, and there's IP address here. So these three servers are the backend full servers I'll be using uh, for my Azure application gateway. All right, let's go ahead and configure the Azure application gateway to load balance between these servers. I'm back to Azure portal. Now let's look for Azure application gateway. I'm gonna click here, application gateway. Since we don't have any application gateway already configured, so we're going to create a new application gateway. Now click on Create. OK, on the screen, I have a subscription called MCA Azure AVS that is pre-selected, we'll keep it as is. For resource group, I'll be selecting a resource group called MCA AVS Demo RZ. For application gateway name, I'll keep it as AVS, AVS Hybrid App Gateway 1, Reason, East US, Tier, Standard B2, Enable auto scaling. We don't need auto scaling here. Remaining, I'll just leave it as is. For virtual network, you have to be careful here when you set up the virtual network. It has to be the virtual network that is actually connected with your AVS private cloud. So in my case, the virtual network that is connected to my AVS private cloud is MCA VNet Demo. I'm going to select that. Another thing is, once you select this virtual network on application gateway, you cannot change the application gateway virtual network through UI once it is done, right? So you have to be really careful when you do this. Now in terms of subnet, it will automatically select a subnet, which is a gateway subnet. I have a gateway subnet configured there in that VNet. So it is automatically populated here, which is app gateway subnet one. And there is an IP range for that, as you can see here. Next, we'll configure the front ends. Now for front end, I'll be using this load balancer as a public load balancer, which is accessible through internet. So I'll select public. And also public IP address. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to select uh, a public IP address that I have configured earlier, which is hybrid app get pay public IP. I'm just going to select that. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and go for backend configuration. So click next and backends. For backends, I'm going to click on add a backend pool. Uh, the name of the backend pool is AVS. For target type, I'll keep it as IP address for FQDN. Now the target, as we saw earlier, uh, are these virtual machines, right? These are the web servers. And the IP address I have for this is here. I'm going to copy that and paste it here. 10.1.11.101, first server, second server is 102, and third server is 103. I'm good with this. I click on Add. Now you can see here, this backend pool has three targets, which is great. Now let's go for configuration. Next configuration. We have public IP configured, uh, and we have backend pool also there. Now we need to do is routing rules. So click on add a new routing rule. So rule name is, okay, priority, I'll keep it at the highest priority, which is one. You can see here in information, one is the highest and 20,000 being the lowest. So one here. Listener name, uh, it is again, uh, just give a listener name. In terms of protocol, we'll just keep it as is. Uh, HTTP, port 80, listen type basic, error pays, nothing. We'll just uh, keep it at no. Now, we also need to configure this backend target here. Just watch out for this one. So, backend targets. Now, backend pool, we have configured earlier. We'll just select that. And in terms of backend setting, we don't have any backend setting yet. So, I'm going to create a new backend setting. Click on add new. Now, backend setting name. Backend setting one. Backend protocol, we'll just use HTTP for this demo. Back and port is 80. Everything else, additional settings, cookie based affinity, connection learning, everything will keep it at disabled. Request timeout for a second. Let's minimize it to 10. Everything else, I'll keep it at default. And we'll just click on add. Okay, so all this looks okay here. Now I'm going to click on next and go for tagging. I'll just add a few, add few tags. That's owner and environment. I'll keep it as test environment. Now let's go next, review and create. Now in this screen, you can see it is running the final validation and validation has passed. So I'm gonna go ahead and create here. So it has started deployment. Deployment could take anywhere between five to 10 minutes. So the deployment process is ongoing. Okay, so our application gateway deployment has been completed. It took about five minutes for this to complete. Now let's go to the resource and see what's going on there. As you can see here in this overview page, I have a front end public IP address for this application gateway. Let's copy this one. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just paste it here in a new tab and see what happens. All right. So as you can see with this public IP address of the application gateway, the traffic is actually getting sent to the backend servers. Uh, if I again press enter here, it will do the round robin and then the web request will go to the next server. Let's refresh again. Now it goes to 101, goes to 102. If I refresh again, goes to 103. All right, so right now it's just going through the IP address, right? So let's just make it a little bit interesting and then use this IP address for an FQDN. I have a, a website called knowledgeacademy.io registered and I do have a DNS provider, DNS manager, where I can actually add A records for this domain. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new A record. I'm going to add a record. I'll call it AVS app gateway demo TTL. I'll keep it at minimum 30. Record type is A. And I'm just going to use the IP address of the load balancer, IP address of the application gateway here. Now I'm going to save the record. And if I use this FQDN instead of the IP address here, now it is bringing me to that load balancer, to that application gateway. So let's refresh again, one more time. Now it's gone to 103. You can see it's moving to different servers. Refresh again, 101, 102, 103. So what's happening here is the application gateway here that we just configured is actually receiving the request from the internet, from the user, and then it is sending those application traffic to the backend pool, to the backend servers that we have configured, right? This backend pool which are these three. And these backend pools are the backend pools that are running on Azure VMware Solution, Hybrid App 1, Hybrid App 2, Hybrid App 3. So what we saw in our earlier video is a browser, a user is browsing the load balancer's IP address or uh, FQDN DNS name, or the web address. Application get receives that traffic. 
uh, depending on what listener has been configured and what rules has been configured, it will then route those traffic to the respective application servers. So in our case, the backend pool, the target are these servers, and all of these servers, as you saw earlier, is residing in Azure VM resolution. So this is how easy it is to configure application gateway for your load balancing requirement. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found this video helpful. We look forward to working together with you. Bye for now.